Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good afternoon all of you. So in our previous lecture, we have discussed about the nature and functioning of insurance. What does the insurance means? What is the nature of insurance? That is your primary insurance. And what is the functionality of the insurance? Your primary functions, your secondary functions and other functions that we have already discussed in our lecture number one. Now in lecture number two, I will discuss with you the historical development of insurance. To start with, let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Naresh Mahipal, Senior Assistant Professor, Faculty of Law, University of Delhi. So in this topic, we will discuss about the history, history of the insurance, how it begins, what is the origin of insurance throughout the world and in Indian context also. We will discuss about it. To introduce the topic, I would like to say that the history of insurance, it goes back as far as time immemorial and shows that no matters how big they are today, insurance companies still operate on what is essential and ancient system. Now they have just only grown, but it is very, very ancient system through this topic. We will come to know that what is the origin and how it grows. I will give you a brief overview of the history of insurance in this topic, along with an explanation of some of the significant events that shaped the insurance industry as it exists now and why insurance is still vital in today's society. So in this lecture, I would try to cover these certain topics. Number one, that is historical development of insurance. Then we will try to cover origin of marine insurance, then origin of fire insurance or the property insurance, and then origin of life insurance. And lastly, we will discuss about the developmental phase of insurance in India. So first of all, let us discuss about the historical development of insurance, how it originated, how it gained the birth, where it started, in what form it started. These all things will be uh, discussed year wise and the era wise also. So if I talk about the origin of insurance, the origin of insurance is as old as historical society, the primitive way you can say. The oldest forms of insurance contracts traced are found in the form of Botomdi contracts which were practiced by the merchants of Babylon in as early as 4000 to 3000 BC. It is as much primitive as that time you can say. Botomdi was also practiced in Hindus by the in Indian society during 600 BC under a contract of Botomri. What is Botomri? Under a contract of Botomri, loans were granted to the merchants with the provision that if the shipment was lost or robbed by pirates or if the ship got sunk in the deep water, the loan did not have to be repaid. The loan was guaranteed to that extent. The loan was insured. The person who got insurance from the insured, the loan giver, that you need not to repay if the ship sunks or it gets robbed by the pirates. The interest on the loan covered the risk. However, there is no evidence yet that in the present form, insurance was practiced prior to 12th century. As the civilization progressed, insurance cover 
grew with it. Many insurance policies were covered, many insurance policies were came into existence with different type of premium amounts. Marin insurance is the oldest form of insurance. So we will discuss about the origin of origin of marine insurance first of all. Marine insurance is the oldest form of insurance. Under the Botomri contract, loans were granted to merchants of Babylon with the provision that if the shipment was lost, robbed or sunk at sea, the loan did not have to be paid. The interest on the loan covered the risk and this led to a system of credit and the law of interest was well developed. Loan is given by way of credit and interest covers the risk. The contract of insurance was made an essential part of contract of carriage. Botomri was also anticipated and practiced by Indians in 600 BC. As the marine transportation was then very much dependent on the mercy of winds and elements, the freight was fixed according to the season. This loan amount also differs from the season to season. The sailors were also very much exposed to the risk of piracy on the open seas and highway robbery. The vessels and merchandise was looted. Besides these, there were several risks such as vessel capturing by king's enemies or sinking of vessel, floods, etc. in the deep waters. These enormous risks phenomenal led to the requirement of a cooperative mechanism to safeguard the marine traders. The cooperative device was voluntary in the beginning, but now in the modern days, it has expanded rapidly. Marine insurance was imported from the cities of northern Italy where it was practiced at about the end of the 12th century. So from 12th century onward, we are having some substantial evidence also about the practice of the marine insurance. It became highly developed in the 15th century. In the year 1556, King Philip II made marine insurance regulations for Spain and in the year 1563, three ships were insured on a voyage from Hawaii to Central America. Subsequently, in the year 1575, during the rule of Queen Elizabeth I, Chamber of Assurance in the Royal Exchange was opened for the registration of marine parcels. Subsequently, an Act of Parliament was passed in the year 1601 to deal with the disputes arising out of marine insurance. During the period 1720 to 1824, two companies to name as London Assurance and Royal Exchange enjoyed a prominent position in the field of marine insurance. These are considered to be the very first companies who were prominently engaged in the marine insurance business with the blessings of the Queen's bench at that. It was only during the 18th century that marine insurance was started as a specialized business. Companies started professionally for that for other ships also. The market for insurance on a worldwide scale has expanded rapidly in 20th century. With the growing complexity of life, trade and commerce, specialized marine insurance services were introduced. Coming to Indian context about the marine insurance, in India, the marine insurance has been phenomenal. It has a deep rooted history. It finds mention in the Vedas written by Manu, 
that is dharma shastra and kautilya's arth shastra it talks in terms of pooling at the times of natural calamities such as fire floods and any other kind of epidemic that arose in during those days it talks about the helping extending your hands to the each other in the community at that time but as known to the world today marine insurance has its origin in england the britishers opened seven marine insurance companies in calcutta between 1797 and 1810 so this is something about marine insurance how this fire insurance originated it is it also has a deep rooted evolution fire insurance originated much later obtaining impetus from the great fire of london in 1666 the victims of fire hazards were provided with necessities of life in england fire insurance office was established in the year 1681 a number of insurance companies were originated in england after 1711 during the so called bubble era at that time many insurance companies originated nevertheless two important and successful english insurance companies were formed during this period to be named as the london assurance corporation and the second one is royal exchange assurance corporation what is general insurance basically we classify insurance into two headings that is your life insurance and general insurance so when we discuss about the fire insurance it is covered under the general insurance business so what is general insurance all assets are covered by general insurance maybe it is your property insurance maybe it is your fire insurance it is covered under the general insurance so all assets are covered by general insurance contracts so that policy holder is not excessively impacted by the loss or damage sustained and that in the event that an asset is lost or gets damaged in the future someone will be available to handle the loss this is how the assets are covered by the general insurance contract this is the basic purpose general insurance is funded by premiums just like fire insurance what is the importance of general insurance why we need the general insurance first of all it safeguard possessions we know that when our assets are you know covered by the insurance policies it safeguards the possessions also and if any misfortune event happens in the event of loss or any fire the insured will have someone to contact where you should go where you should ask for the amount there is a insurer for you at that time another importance of general insurance is that your valuable financial assets will all be safeguarded safeguarded means in the sense you will get all that amount which are insured with the things which are insured and you can reestablish you can repurchase all those things and those will be safeguarded for you it provides the policy holders with a sense of relief obviously if you are insured you can mobilize your capital you can bring more and more industries your raw materials uh, working labors into existence because everything in your knowledge in your establishment it is insured so in a very some environment in a tense free environment in a sensitive environment now you can work with all with all your enthusiasm with all your capabilities so it provides a sense of relief in the policy holders now uh, what are the types of general insurance policies in india 
the very first type of general insurance business is automobile insurance we all know that in india whether you drive a two wheeler or a four wheeler it is required automobile insurance is foremost thing only if your vehicle is insured you will be able to drive it legally two varieties of auto insurance exist number 1 third party insurance what is that it is a bare minimum required by the motor vehicles act in order to operate a car or scooter or any vehicle it pays for costs incurred in the event that your car destroys someone else or the public's property if miss something miss happening happens with your car with your vehicle to any other vehicle or the car then the third party responsibility will be taken by the insurer company second type of auto insurance exist is comprehensive package policy this type of insurance covers losses or damages to you and your car as well as liabilities and damages to third parties this is a comprehensive package the losses could result from a fire theft accident natural disaster and any other kind of event you can see this is a comprehensive package where you as well as the third party is insured and second type of policy is about the health insurance health insurance plays a very wide range of costs associated with hospital stays brought on by the illness or the accidents one can choose between a family floater plan which provides coverage for every member of the family and a solo health plan policy when it comes to the health insurance of the insured person alone that that depends upon you what kind of policy you want to opt for third kind of general insurance is home insurance in the event that any man made or natural cause results in the perils of the house the policy covers all possible losses to the house and all of its contents it falls into three general categories number 1 structural insurance that is it guarantees the home structure the structure on the basis of which your house is built that is also insured that in case of any miss happening falling of the structure or any loss to the structure you will get the cost of the structure that has been constructed by you another type of home insurance is contents insurance for example it protects the homes possessions whatever it is in the home that is your doors and other fixtures these all things are the contents of that particular content insurance other type of home insurance is furniture protection it combines contents and building protection under a single policy your building your uh, fixtures that is your doors your almiras your furnitures your sofas your beds and other articles these all are combinedly covered under this home insurance policy fourth is your travel insurance nowadays we can see that losses occurred while traveling as a result of delayed flights you are unable to get the contract fructified there is a loss of luggage or there is a cancellation of trips these all are covered by travel insurance if you are admitted to the hospital while traveling it also facilitates cashless hospitalization we all know about the this uh, medical policies and the travel insurance etc other is commercial insurance to safeguard themselves against particular risks businessmen traders 
रिटेल स्टोर एंड अदर बिजनेस वेंचर्स बाय कमर्शियल इंश्योरेंस पॉलिसीज दे ऑप्ट फॉर कमर्शियल इंश्योरेंस पॉलिसीज देर आर मैनी डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ कमर्शियल इंश्योरेंस पॉलिसीज सच एज ग्रुप मेडिक्लेम पॉलिसी फायर एंड बर्गलरी इंश्योरेंस एक्सेट्रा सो दिस इज ए बेसिकली ए ग्रुप ऑफ यू नो पॉलिसीज different type of policies which are grouped together for a large number of people to get the insurance done to those to cover yourself against some particular risk in india general insurance came during the legacy of british it started working in the year 1850 in calcutta with the establishment of triton insurance company limited other oldest of fire insurance companies includes the sun insurance office calcutta 1710 london assurance and royal exchange assurance 1720 and phoenix assurance company 1782 etc and so on you can see so these are the oldest fire insurance companies some other companies like liverpool and london and globe north british and commercial union established their branches at bombay calcutta and other presidency towns during the legacy of british at present fire insurance business is in the hands of subsidiaries of general insurance corporation of india which was incorporated as a company in 1971 this millennium has seen insurance come a full circle in a journey extended to nearly 200 years the general insurance in india could not progress much many of the early general insurance companies failed from speculative investments poor management and inadequate distributive systems so at early stage general insurance companies get a backstage it did not flourish much it did not progress much at that time numerous insurance kinds become more well known in india as a result of insurance industries liberalization several specialized products like property insurance auto insurance health insurance and others were easily accessible the introduction of digital technologies further changed the insurance market by increasing customer convenience and accessibility to goods so this is something about the fire insurance in the context of your general insurance business that how it originated and what is the present position in india coming to the origin of life insurance and then what is the position in india we will come it from the earliest traces of life insurance so the earliest traces of life insurance made its appearance in england in the 16th century the first recorded evidence being the policy issued on the life of william gibson the first registered life office in england was hand in hand society established in 1696 in the 18th century societies began to be formed and started issuing life insurance policies to name a few important societies which emerged at that time which has the earliest traces of life insurance those are the amicable society for a perpetual assurance formed in 1705 the equitable life assurance society formed in 1762 and the westminster society 
formed in 1792 they started its operation so these are certain important societies which started growing and establishing their offices at different places the premium rates that they charge were dependent on the reputation and health condition of the insured from uh, england to america the first american insurance company was organized by benjamin franklin in the year 1752 as the philadelphia contribution by 1820 there were 17 stock life insurance companies in the state of new york alone many of the life insurance companies failed from speculative investments poor management and inadequate distribution system to say 33 life insurance companies failed between 1873 and 1877 this was the position of life insurance companies very factors were involved into that from speculative investments from the poor management and in adequate distribution system these were the primary factors but many other factors were responsible that these insurance companies failed between 1873 and 1877 it was only in the year 1910 life insurance enjoyed a steady growth in the united states because of the great expansion in world trade the market for insurance on a worldwide scale has expanded rapidly in the 20th century the majority of the world's insurance business are concentrated in europe and north america now coming to indian context about the development of insurance sector in india in india the insurance sector has completed all the facets of competition from beginning an open market to being nationalized and then getting back to the forms of a liberalized market once again with the establishment of oriental life insurance company in bengal presidency in the year 1818 followed by bombay life assurance company in 1823 the madras equitable life insurance society in 1829 and oriental life assurance company in 1874 the business of indian life insurance started these are the early traces of life insurance business we started operating in the indian that is coming from 1818 and more companies were established between 1874 and now so on the year 1870 was a landmark year in the history of indian insurance when the bombay life assurance company started covering indian lives at normal rates this was the premium was lower at that time it started covering more and more people so that is why i am saying that it is a landmark year where the normal peoples where the common peoples were common peoples life was insured at the cheaper rates at that since then several offices developed in india some of the important milestones in the indian life insurance businesses are to name first of all i will say in the year 1912 the indian life assurance companies act came into force for regulating the life insurance business in 1928 the indian insurance companies act was enacted for enabling the government to collect statistical information on both life and non life insurance policies 
this is very important here in the history of insurance law we cannot forget we do not have any scope to leave this year 1938 because the earlier legislation consolidated the insurance act with the aim of safeguarding the interest of the insuring public insurance act 1938 was passed through which everything is governed it was consolidated by way of legislation in the year 1950 the insurance amendment act of 1950 abolished principal agencies coming to 1956 an ordinance was issued on january 1956 whereby 245 indians and foreign insurers and provident societies were taken over by the central government and they got nationalized very important change in the history of insurance when these companies were taken by the central government and those were got nationalized life insurance corporation known as lic it was formed by an act of parliament in the year 1956 that is to say lic act 1956 so two years are very important for us to keep in mind while studying the insurance law that is 1938 when insurance act 1938 was passed and 1956 when the life insurance corporation of india act 1956 was passed the development of insurance sector in india has been phenomenal the insurance industry has undergone massive change over the last millennium extended to nearly 200 years there are numerous private and governmental insurance companies in india that offered a diversified product portfolio and excellent services during the period of 1900 to 1912 there was a tremendous growth of indian insurance companies due to swadeshi movement this uncontrolled growth led to poor management frauds and inadequate distribution systems more company grows at that time but without any proper management frauds were conducted so it was not flourished that much at that time in 1912 the indian life assurance act came into force for regulating the life insurance business in india during the period of 1913 to 1938 the life insurance companies faced tough time after the coming of indian life assurance act 1912 into force many small companies wound up and the few which survived faced a tough competition with the foreign companies after the world war 1 there was again a demand to boycott foreign companies and a demand for complete independence this spirit once again strengthens the indian insurance companies coming back in 1928 the indian insurance companies act was enacted inter alia to enable the government to collect statistical data on both life and non life insurance companies including the provident insurance societies now to discuss between the period of 1938 to 1950 how the insurance companies grew the period of 1938 to 1950 it witnessed the steady growth enjoyed by the indian insurance companies being free from foreign companies competition in the year 1950 again the insurance act was amended making far reaching changes such as requirement of equity capital for companies carrying on life insurance business there was a ceiling on shareholdings stricter control on investments appointment of controller or 
of insurance, submission of periodical returns of investments and other information to the controller, contribution of a life insurance council and a general council. So, these were certain changes made by the amendment into the Insurance Act 1938. These amendments were made in year 1950. Second is about the period of 1956. Till date, achieved the objectives of social pattern in true spirits from 1938 to 1950 Amendment Act and up to 1956. The objectives of social patterns were achieved in two spirits. In the year 1956, the management and control of 245 Indian and foreign insurers and provident societies were taken over by the central government and then nationalized them. On September 1, 1956, Life Insurance Corporation known as LIC came into existence by an act of parliament to be called as LIC Act 1956. It started off with a capital of rupees 5 crore and that who procured from the government of India. In the year 1957, General Insurance Council, an arm of the Insurance Association of India, framed a code of conduct for insurance companies to guarantee fair conduct and sound business patterns. In the year 1968, the Insurance Act was amended for regulating investments, setting minimal solvency level, giving the controller more powers to inspect and to issue directions in all matters such as setting up of a tariff advisory committee to fix, control and regulate the rates of premiums and terms and conditions of policies etc. In the year 1972, the General Insurance Business Nationalization Act, it nationalized the general insurance business in India with effective from January 1, 1973. It bring out important change in the general insurance business. So, the, again this year 1972 is remarkable when it comes to the general insurance business. 107 insurers, 107 insurance companies were integrated and grouped into four companies. They all were amalgamated, they all were consolidated to form four companies. That is to say, number one, the National Insurance Company Limited. Second, the New India Assurance Company Limited. Third, the Oriental Insurance Company Limited and fourth, the United India Insurance Company Limited. These all 107 insurers were integrated and gripped into these four companies. The general insurance company was incorporated as a company business. Most importantly, most significantly, which we cannot escape while discussing the origin and history of the development of the insurance in India, that is the year 1993. In the year 1993, a committee was set up under the chairmanship of R. N. Malhotra, the former governor of Reserve Bank of India, to propose recommendations for reforms in the insurance sector. The committee submitted its report in 1994, wherein, among other things, it recommended that private entities should be allowed to enter into insurance sector. This was the major implication, major you know, change in the insurance sector, wherein private entities were asked to be allowed to enter into the general insurance business. Government of India, it followed the recommendations of the Malhotra Committee report. And this is how the private entities entered into the insurance sector also. 
this step of government of india liberalized the insurance sector in the year 2000 with the passage of the insurance regulatory and development authority act 1999 the establishment of irda regulatory and development authority which regulates and takes the steps for the development of the insurance sector the irda at present it is known as irdai insurance regulatory and development authority of india the irda opened the market to private players to enter the market with some limits on direct foreign ownership in the year 2000 the subsidiaries of the general insurance corporation of india gic were delinked and made independent entities those who were linked with the subsidiaries those were linked with the gic those were again delinked and made independent entities parliament passed a bill delinking the four subsidiaries from gic in the year 2002 there were 24 general insurance companies including the ecgc and agriculture insurance corporation of india the insurance sector in india is growing fast and future looks promising for the insurance industry with several changes in regulating framework which will lead to further change in the way the industry conducts its business and engages with its customers so from 19th century from 20th century coming to 21st century the insurance sector in india is growing by way of a progressive steps you can say the act has been consolidated in the year 1938 lic act was passed in 1956 again irda it was established in the 1999 so these were some progressive steps which makes the commitment of the government of india that it will change the way the industry conducts its business and it shows that our insurance sector is growing fast and the future looks promising for the insurance industry because several changes has been made regulatory framework has been changed in the insurance sector today insurance sector in india consists of 56 insurance companies out of which 24 are in life insurance business and 31 are non life insurance when i say non life insurance it is general insurance business that is to say fire insurance your uh, theft insurance your property insurance health insurance these all are your non life insurance companies and one company is recognized as reinsurance company india has also entered into the reinsurance business your car is reinsured that is under the general insurance business despite the fact that insurance has been practiced in the nation since prehistoric times industry regulations and standards did not came into effect until the year 1818 the advancement in the history of insurance in india have been remarkable from the year 1938 to 1956 beginning in 1993 with the formation of the malhotra committee and ending in 2000 with the president of india's approval to the insurance regulatory and development bill with the establishments of the irdai and with the lic act we cannot leave those behind this is shows that it advances the insurance sector in india and this advancement is remarkable the insurance industry since then insurance industry has undergone several stages since permitting foreign direct investment fdi was uh, you know through the liberalization fdi was allowed and private enterprises to operate in the market 
in 2000 the indian government opened up the insurance industry to private businesses capped foreign direct investment at 26% foreign companies were allowed to invest up to 26% and rest portion will be held by the indian insurance company the bjp led national democratic alliance administration raised the insurance industries foreign direct investment that is fdi cap to 49 percent at the end of september 2011 finance minister mr arun jetli announced his first union budget for 2014 to 15 stating that the government has chosen to raise foreign direct investment fdi in the insurance sector from the existing 26 percent to 49 so now this capping was up to 49 percent the proposal thereafter to liberalize foreign direct investment in indian insurance companies from the current 49 percent to 74 percent with effect from august 2021 was revealed in the union budget 2021 to 2022 so now the capping has been changed from 49 percent it was made to 74 percent the indian insurance companies foreign investment rules 2015 were recently changed by the ministry of finance and the insurance amendment bill 2021 was enacted by parliament to raise the foreign direct investment ceiling in the insurance sector from 49 percent to 74 percent now the foreign insurance companies can have their share up to 74 percent and rest 26 percent can be held by the indian insurance companies the final guidelines for greater foreign direct investment in the insurance sector have been made clear so this key point when i talk about the key points of this 2021 what are the key points of these new rules which are made in the year 2021 an indian insurance firm that has foreign investment will have at least one resident indian citizen among its managing director chief executive officer and the majority of its directors and key management personnel this is the foremost key point of the new rules that has been made by the government in the year 2021 total foreign investment here would mean the sum of both direct and indirect foreign investment foreign direct investment is defined as as an investment made directly by a foreigner whereas indirect foreign investment is the investment made indirectly into another indian business by an indian company that is owned or managed by the foreigners right so coming to the significance after discussing key points of the new rules what are the significance of the new rules that up to 74 percent foreign ownership may lead to future insurance products incorporating international best practices obviously when you are opening the market for the foreigners for the foreign insurance companies they will bring their own practices and it will obviously these policies which will be issued to us this will incorporate all the products of the international best practices in them additionally it will assist in lowering the price of insurance goods in india because these foreigners are themselves sending their ships from that particular state and now they are operating in india with the branch office or the new insurance company obviously it will fix the it will lower the price of insurance also it is advantageous for indian promoters since it will allow them to maintain control over the board and management and will provide them with additional funding to support their expansion if indians are involved and foreigners are there in your company as a member of boards also then obviously they will provide you the investments for that smaller insurance companies or those whose sponsors are unable to provide more funding will gain from it 
which will strengthen them and boost industry competition. In India, which has one of the lowest rates of insurance penetration in world, it is probably going to assist local private insurers in growing quickly and increasing their footprint. So, coming to the conclusion from the historical development of the insurance in world and thereafter India, we can summarize it that origin of insurance is as old as historical society. Marine insurance is the oldest form of insurance and fire insurance although originated much later obtaining impetus from the great fire of London in 1666. In India, general insurance came during the legacy of British era. The earliest traces of life insurance made its appearance in England in the 16th century. Insurance other than life insurance falls under the category of general insurance. There is life insurance and general insurance, your health policies, your fire policies, your property policies and all other kind of policies that is to say reinsurance policy, these all are part of your general insurance business. The government of India has followed the recommendations of the Malhotra committee 1999 which recommended that private entities should be allowed to enter into the insurance sector. On a concluding final remarks, it is worth to mention that India is a home to 200 million middle class household that presents a large unrealized opportunity for participants in the insurance sector. There is a big scope for insurance companies in the insurance sector being the largest middle class households in our country. Due to market saturation in many developed economies, international firms now find the Indian market to be even more alluring. India's insurance market is now highly competitive and has a lot of untapped potential. Indians who have always viewed life insurance as a method to save taxes are suddenly shifting their focuses to the private sector which is offering them a wider range of options and innovative products. No doubt public sector companies are also working well but with the growing competition with the private sector companies more and more private companies are coming and they are offering a handful of insurance benefits. The common man they are shifting their focuses for various innovations and various lucrative products. It not only saves your taxes but now the people are taking as an opportunity of investment as well. The innovative services that are offered by such companies would include using wearable technology to task their health, giving them access to the best physicians, assisting them in maintaining a healthy lifestyle and providing them with additional wellness options. Many blood tests, many consultations to the doctors free of cost and uh, many other packages including the pre mediclaim and your uh, maintaining the healthy lifestyles, they all are the options that are given by the private sectors and it is alluring the general public at large in comparison to the public sector companies. Insurance providers will need to change their image from being someone you only deal with once a crisis occurs. You have to change your focus from dealing with the aspect of crisis occurs to someone who becomes a friend and remains in regular communication with clients throughout their journey. 
customers in the future would want ease and a solution as well as the psychological comfort of knowing they will be covered in the event that something goes wrong. So, the customers are not looking you as a company, they are looking to you as your friends that at the time of need you will provide the assistance. It is accurate to say that insurance industry will change in the future to focus more on liability insurance and completely different kinds of protection. Insurance providers will have to start offering solutions focused on the needs of their clients. Today, India's insurance market has grown in tandem with the nation's economic growth. Numerous insurance companies in the nation are expanding their businesses in the public and private domains. Prehistoric societies are where the idea of insurance first emerged. This include insurance for one's own belongings, commercial ventures, health and even life. So, this is something about origin and historical development of insurance sector throughout the world and insurance sector in India. I hope this lecture will benefit you to understand the origin and historical development of insurance in world at the global level or at the India. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. We usually know William Shakespeare as the most revered figure in the history of English literature. But we often tend to forget that he has also been one of the most hated figures in literature. And here I am not talking only about those boys and girls who have to memorize uh, long sections from Macbeth or King Lear or Julius Caesar uh, before they can go and sit for their school and, or college exams. But I am also talking about people who are themselves quite famous authors. Tolstoy, for instance, considered the writings of Shakespeare to be, and I quote, crude immoral, vulgar and senseless. George Bernard Shaw absolutely loathed Shakespeare as he did Homer. But perhaps no other criticism about Shakespeare is more damaging than the one which says that Shakespeare is a marvellous storyteller, provided someone has told him the story earlier. Now, this piece of criticism is particularly damaging because it is true. None of Shakespeare's plays contain any original story whatsoever. They are all written using pre-existing materials, pre-existing stories. Now, does that diminish the stature of Shakespeare as a dramatist? Well, I'll leave that for you to decide. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippets. <laughs>